Hello guys, Anjul Academy here, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the portal system tutorial series that I will be creating by the start of next month. In this video, I will tell you about the features as well as the limitations of the portal system that we are going to be developing. So let's start with the features of the gun. It's a fully dynamic portal system that shoots from a gun, like this. What sets my tutorial series apart from others is that most of the tutorial series only tell about how to create static portal doors which have to be set in predefined levels. However, my portal system is not like that and can be spawned at runtime by the player. It can obviously teleport the player as well as teleport things like projectiles or things like static meshes. Let's move it towards portal you can see it just got teleported it teleports the player even if the player spawns the portal beneath himself so let me show you an example I spawn this as soon as I spawn it below me I get spawned to this portal let me show you again I got spawned here now one thing that took a lot of time to make was the portal Velocity keeps constant even after teleporting. As you can see, the player retained his velocity after getting teleported from this the portal that was on this floor here to portal that's over here. It also sets the player rotation upon teleport. So right now. The player is facing this way while the portal is for facing this way and if I get teleported it's I'm going to face the negative x-axis instead of the negative y-axis another feature that took a lot of thinking as well as time to get working is the portal spawns only in places where there is enough space so if the player tries to spawn the portal here, it will move itself to a location in which it can completely fit now, if this system wasn't implemented, this is how the portal would spawn if I try to spawn the portal here. You can see it would, it would be cutting through the static meshes and it's spawning. Like this. It, another feature that I worked on was it's this material spawning, sorry, this portal spawning on specific surfaces. So, for example, if the first portal will only spawn on the material that is of this wall and on this wall because its material is black. Some updates I made is how the portal looks like for visual effects. I created these round, shiny things around the portal, and I also added sounds for different portal spawnings. And one huge benefit of, of using this system is that the portals do not cause a huge FPS loss. So I'm running at 120 FPS. Even when I go close to the portal, I still get 120 FPS. Uh, this basically gets updated after every 0.2 seconds. The render target gets updated every 0.2 seconds. And now let's talk about the limitations. So let's start with the portal angles. The portal angle has to be predefined. Basically, I'm using normalized vectors to determine what the rotation of the portal should be. If you don't know what normalized vectors are, they are basically used to tell which location the forward axis is. And the result is a value between negative 1 to positive 1. For example, the axis in front of this wall here is negative x. So the normalized vector of this wall will be negative 1 of x, 0 of y, and 0 of z. Another example, the forward normalized vector for this wall will be 0 for x, 1 for y, and 0 for z. The value depends on what's in front of the wall. Since in front of the wall is the positive y-axis, y will be positive. If, for example, it was, if we were checking the normalized vector of this wall, the return normalized vector will be negative 1 since the forward vector is negative 1. We can use this to our advantage and rotate the portal according to the rotation normalized vector of the wall. So, for example, let me show you. Since the normalized vector gives us negative 1 for x, we're just going to rotate the wall, or portal to negative 180 degrees. So now the portal will be facing the negative x axis. Now here kicks in the limitation. What if the forward normalized vector of the wall is 0.2 in the x-axis and 0.8 in the y-axis? Then we're going to have to set the portal rotation accordingly, something like this. But what if it's 
0.8 in the negative y-axis and 0.7 in the positive x-axis. We're going to have to rotate the portal something like this. We're going to have to do this for every value that we encounter. And as you might have guessed, you can't define the rotation of the portal for every result. And therefore, you have to limit where you can place the portal. In my case, I've limited it to either negative 180 degrees, 0, negative 90 degrees, or 90 degrees, or positive 90 degrees. I cannot place it on this. Let me show you. I cannot place the portal over here since I have not defined the rotation of what the portal should be rotated to. If the forward vector, forward normalized vector of the static mesh is something like 0.5 in the y axis and 0 in the z axis, you can, of course, define it yourself. You're basically just going to be copying and pasting the code and changing the values appropriately, but I have not done it, and this can be a challenge for you guys to complete. Another fault in this is is the render target is not perfect let me show you now when the player is moving the render target is just fine for what we need however the uh, one problem is that the render target moves even when the player is changing camera positions cameras rotation we do not want that to happen because it does not happen in the portals in the portals from the game portal I am currently looking for a fix for this However, I have yet to find any. If you know a solution for this, hopefully you will you will share it with me in the comments so I can implement this fix and get the portal render system working. Another problem is the line trace. Although it's good enough for close range line traces, it's not really that good if you're going to be line tracing at objects that are at a huge distance. So for example, if I place it here, you can see that the HUD tells us the, that the line should line trace should end here, whereas the actual line trace goes here. So that is a problem, and this is not something that can be fixed, sadly. Uh, you could, of course, make the HUD much bigger, so that the port, uh, it doesn't seem as if the portal spawned too far from the ca from the pointing location, but that's up to you how you're going to fix it. And this, these are all the problems that I managed to find. I do not know of any other problems. There might be some problems, but you're going to have to hire a tester to test that out for you. But other than that, the portal system is almost done. And I'll try and upload the tutorial series at the start. By the start of next month, I'm going to start pre-recording these videos. So I do not fall behind schedule. And hopefully you guys will stick around for my portal system and we'll both have fun creating the system. Keep in mind that this is going to be, this tutorial series is actually going to be divided into multiple parts. This is because the portal system is quite complex and there, there are different components that will take up at least 20 minutes to set up. And I do not want to, the video to get too long because it gets tiring for not only me, but also for the viewer. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you're all doing well. Please do like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next update video or the portal tutorial series.